Welcome back. In Module 6 we'll be covering Windows Server Essentials from the Experience Role perspective, but a lot of this information does also apply to the standalone Windows Server Essentials product as well. So if you've got a customer with 25 users or less, then the Windows Server Essentials 2012 R2 product may be a very, very good fit for you. So as we jump into the scenario that we want to cover off here, um, what we've got here is, again, Contoso is uh, running an old version of Small Business Server, in this case 2003. So they're already running an unsupported version of Exchange, which is probably not a good idea. And their version of Windows Server that it's based on is also quickly approaching um, end of support as well. So they need a new replacement, sorry, a new solution that will give them uh, similar capabilities. Um, and in this case, they've, have, you know, they've come to you as a Microsoft partner to get some guidance. And what you've recommended is setting up Office 365 and Azure VM running Windows Server 2012 R2 Essentials. So this Azure VM could also be an on-premise VM. So why would you choose to go down the path of an Azure VM? Well, it's one of the templates inside of Azure, so it's something that you could spin up quite easily. But for a lot of these customers, um, especially ones that need to do the, you know, the transfer of large files between users, etc., it might make a bit more sense to spin this up internally, so run up a, a new server, uh, run Hyper-V as the base, and then install their Windows Server Essentials uh, capabilities on top of that. So. What you end up with now, if you're running Office 365 in the Essentials capability, is a very easy to manage solution that gives you SharePoint Online, Exchange Online, Link Online. Obviously, as long as you're using an Office 365 plan that does include those components. And added benefits include things such as your, you know, the ability to get access to the Office 365 uh, Pro Plus uh, subscription, for example. So there are a lot of benefits in order, uh, you know, if you do take advantage of going down this path. So. Before we jump in too much further, let's install the Windows Server Essentials Experience role. So you can actually see what's involved in getting this installed uh, into an already established uh, Windows Server VM. Now, back inside our virtual machine, what you can see here is that we're at Server Manager, we're at the base dashboard, and all I want to do here is add roles and features. And in this case, it's the Windows Server Essentials Experience role that I want to add. So as we go through, I choose role-based or feature-based installation. Then because I haven't joined a domain or anything like that, I haven't created a pool of different servers, we only get that choice of that one server. So you can see here that you know, based on the name of it, it's something that we probably need to address at some point soon. So let's just go through and add the role. But importantly, see here that it is Windows Server 2012 R2 standard that we are adding these capabilities to, and that you can also add this to Windows Server 2012 R2 Data Center as well. Now, as we scroll through and take a look at what's in here, you know, we've got the standard uh, offerings that are normally seen inside of the Server Manager Add Roles and Features Wizard. But all we want to do here is select the Windows Server Essentials Experience. And now this is one, one of the areas that I find quite fascinating because it actually shows you some of the things that are going on behind the scenes in terms of what's being enabled. So if we take a look, things such as the branch cache capabilities, just in case you've got clients that are using uh, enterprise editions of the Windows client and can leverage that, uh, we can see here that there's additional file services installed, uh, remote server admin tools are installed, there are additional web capabilities, etc. So there's quite a bit that's going on behind the scenes as we run through this. And if I just go through and add features and next, we won't make any changes here, but we'll take a look at a few of the things. So once again, we'll see that branch cache has been selected, for example. We don't need to make any changes to the web server roles or the role services. And one of the things that it does call out here is that Windows Server Essentials is only supported for single domain environments. And because we are talking, you know, 100 users or less or 200 users or less, there's really not that many good arguments for having multiple domains in this kind of scenario. Now, I don't want to choose the option to restart the destination server if required. So instead of what I'll do, I'll just click on install and we'll let this installation start taking place. So this is going to take a little bit of time so just a couple of important things around the installation here and doing a compare and contrast with this versus what we would be doing if we were using Windows Server Essentials as the standalone product. So the big difference between this and the standalone product is that with the standalone product, the Essentials capabilities are not 
an optional component. They're something that needs that they run, they run out of box, uh, it will go through and it will prompt you for all the appropriate domain and um, forest etc type settings uh, and you don't really get a choice in that. It, it's part of what the product is licensed to do and part of the technical uh, feature set that is delivered. But in this case what you can see is that it's uh, an optional component once we are inside of Server Manager. So remember that when we are looking at Essentials as a standalone product that what we've got there is a product that supports up to 25 users whereas in this case uh, the supported limit is 100 users and 200 devices uh, and it's one of those things where realistically if someone was larger than that they probably would want a lot more control over these types of uh, capabilities as well. So let's just hit close on that and once we hit close what we'll see here is that we're still getting the uh, notification that we need to do something and in this case it's the post deployment configuration. Now if we do a check your system configuration and we see what's going on here this is where it will go through and uh, it needs to be set up as that first server in the environment. So this is something that you need to plan ahead if you are planning on adding it to an existing environment. Um, you, know, you need to really think about this as more of a you know setting up a new environment that you're going to be migrating things to. So it can take up to 30 minutes depending on the speed and you may see several reboots and the computer name cannot be changed after this configuration because remember it's a domain controller as well as having a few other roles. So for the sake of today we'll be very very creative and we'll call it Contoso seeing that the scenario we've got is Contoso and internal domain name uh, we'll say Contoso that's fine Now for the administrator account name, I can't use administrator, so I'll get creative and I'll try using admin. I'll type in my not so secret password. And now this process is going to take a while so uh, once this goes through and completes uh, we'll be able to come back and take a look at things. Okay so we're back after the first reboot so let's sign in and see where we're at. launch into server manager and it's telling us that configuration is completed and that we've successfully configured Windows Server Essentials on this server. So we won't go to the next stage yet which is register with Microsoft Online Services. We'll speak a little bit about that in, in the next series of slides and then we'll come back in and take a look at some of the capabilities that we can uh, take advantage of here. Now that we've seen the installation, let's jump in and take a look at some of the capabilities that Windows Server Essentials does provide. So really three key areas. So first of all around protecting your data. So simplified backups, built-in disaster recovery capabilities and simplified management. But also for those who've been used to using things such as the remote web access or remote web workplace in previous versions of Essentials or Small Business Server, it starts giving you a lot of those same types of capabilities so that remote users can very easily get back inside the network and access to the resources they need in a secure manner. And now the final piece, and this is obviously what we are going to be focusing on based on that scenario, is that ability to very easily integrate with cloud services so that you start getting business agility. So it's very easy for you to add users, remove users, change the licenses assigned to users. But in this case, instead of having to do it through the online portal for Office 365, you could do it directly uh, on your Windows Server Essentials uh, virtual machine. So from the business uh, continuity perspective, 
The important thing here is, is we can start leveraging some of the inbuilt Windows Server capabilities such as Hyper-V Replica. So in Windows Server 2012, uh, as we've discussed in previous sessions, you had the ability to do a replica from one location or one server to another. And in Server 2012 R2, we've got the ability to do a third level replica so that we can actually start thinking about considerations where uh, you know, we may actually need to take that data completely off site, but have a virtual machine that we can actually bring back online in a very, very uh, small amount of time. Now, the Office 365 integration pieces, you know, some of the things we can do here is we can manage mobile devices and configure the policies. We've got access to the SharePoint libraries, so we can create SharePoint libraries easily. We can see how much storage is being used. Even with things like uh, Exchange users, we can see who the, who's got the largest mailboxes, etc. But in a lot of cases, you know, because you know, these plans include 50 gig of uh, online storage uh, and potentially unlimited uh, archiving depending on the plan that you're on, you know, trying to monitor how much email is being used just isn't as much of an issue as it used to be because you don't have those personal storage issues that you need to deal with. Probably the most critical part though is, is you know, why would you still care about the size of someone's online mailbox is if there are people that you're trying to re-educate and move them away from using email as their file system and instead you're trying to get them to either use a file system on their local machine or on a network share or to get them to start pushing this information into SharePoint Online where you do start being able to leverage quite a few additional benefits. Now, another piece that's quite important is the Azure Backup Integration. Now, this is something that you get with standard Windows Server 2012 R2, so the standard edition and data center editions do include Azure Backup capabilities, but with Windows Server Essentials, they really, really simplify this. So it helps to protect the server data against loss and corruption uh, by doing backups to off-site storage uh, in Windows Azure. So it's a cons consistent experience, so you'll see in the user interface, even though I won't run through this particular feature, you just access it directly from the Essentials dashboard. It's not something where you need to learn a new UI in order to, to use it. And what we, we do in this case is we go through and we really simplify the process versus doing it without Essentials. So there are some really nice benefits. So instead of it being maybe a dozen or so steps, it's really just a few clicks for you to be able to get this up and running very, very quickly. So instead of talking about these online integration capabilities, let's jump in and take a look at a virtual machine that's ready to go where we can start running these uh, online services integration pieces. Now, back in our virtual machine, we don't need to be working in Server Manager for the next task, so I'll just close that down. And instead what we'll do is we'll jump in and take a look at the dashboard. Now what you can see is I've also placed a shortcut to the desktop down on the taskbar so that we can very easily open that if we do have multiple applications open already. But I'll just launch it from the desktop seeing that uh, everything's nice and clear at the moment. For anyone who's worked with previous versions of uh, Windows Server Essentials, the standalone product, or for people who've worked with recent versions of Small Business Server, much of this interface is going to appear quite familiar because it is effectively built on the same building blocks. So all I really want to focus on here is not the full list of capabilities that are in this Essentials dashboard, but instead we'll just focus on a small amount of what's available through the services. And what I want to do first of all is integrate with Office 365. But you can see the other options. We can integrate with Azure Active Directory. We can integrate with Windows Intune. We can integrate with Windows Azure Backup as well. But let's just go through and choose the option to integrate with Office 365. Now it does prompt saying that we do need to um, either set up a new tenant or in this case I already have an existing tenant, one of my own ones. So I've already got a subscription so I'll check that box. Now I'll use my credentials to sign in and it will try to apply a stronger password policy than we've already got in place. And from here it should only take it a couple of seconds for it to pick up the information that it needs so that we can then start synchronizing through to Office 365. Now what this means is, you know, we do have this much easier to use console where we can perform a lot of the common day-to-day -day tasks that are required for Office 365 utilization in user organizations. So simple things such as adding users, for example, um, and assigning licenses are things that we can do directly through the Windows Server Essentials dashboard rather than having to fire up the web browser and get access into the, uh, the portal. So let's restart that.
and we'll jump in and take a look. Okay, so some of the things to take note of, first of all, once we jump into services, we'll see that the integrate with Azure Active Directory um, is also one that will actually be enabled because we can't really integrate with Office 365 without integrating with Windows Azure Active Directory as well. Or these days it's Microsoft Azure Active Directory, so this team needs to put out a little bit of an update to get some of that wording changed. Um, so let's go through now and you know what we can see here is we've got the Office 365 integration piece which uh, will give us uh, more information about our um, subscription but instead what I want to do is jump into users and add a new user so let's do that so let's add a user account and who will I make it I'll make it me seeing that we don't actually have an account with my name down on in the local environment we won't give it the name uh, Marco Shea, we'll give it the account name Marcos, we'll give it a password, and what permissions do we want? Standard user or admin? For now I'll just make this person a standard user. Oops. It helps when we have matching passwords. Now here's where things get interesting is that we can either create the new online services account but what if we already have users existing in Office 365 so we may have set up a trial tenant added a few users just for the sake of a pilot what we could do here is instead of assigning it to or creating that new one we can assign it to an existing online account um, or we can choose not to assign one but in this case I want to match this user account up to my online persona uh, we'll give read access, uh, allow VPN, yes, do we allow remote web access, yes, definitely one of the big reasons why people use essentials. And now as it's going through and creating this new user account, you can see here that it's doing the Microsoft Online Services account configuration. So pretty much it's gone through and it's, it's set that up and what we now have down here is this new user account with the Microsoft online account information. So now let's jump in and take a look at the properties for that user. And what we really want to focus on here is the online information. So let's just scroll back. So you can see here there's a little bit of information around the distribution groups etc. So anything in Exchange Online for example would be brought down to here as well. Uh, but let's jump to Microsoft Online so we can see what rights have been assigned to this user. And what we can see here is that through the portal we've been able to give the user access to everything that's inside of the Office 365 E3 plan. So if I wanted to start deselecting certain components, so what you can see here is I've got Azure AD rights, I've got Office 365 Pro Plus, I've got Link. So depending on what elements you actually want to start exposing to the customer, you don't have to assign everything at once. Uh, but in this case it's easy enough for us to choose those options. And what you can also see here is, is that I do have this Intune uh, capability being ex uh, exposed directly as well. So even though I didn't specifically tell it to do that in the dashboard, because this is all based on Azure Active Directory, it means that uh, anything that Azure Active Directory can expose to us uh, will be exposed so that we can start assigning additional licenses in here. So I'll just hit OK on that. So that's just a very quick look at the integration services, so enabling them, adding the user, and then seeing what rights that user has or has already got assigned. And in this case, because that user was pre-existing, we didn't get a chance to add new rights, but it's easy enough. You've got an idea of what the interface will look like to assign the, the user licenses that are inside of Office 365. And in this case, we've also got the added benefit that it's also uh, exposing Windows in tune. And now we're back to the presentation and you know, we just saw a quick overview of that online services integration piece so I didn't show all the details because it, that was really just supposed to be a brief overview for those of you who aren't familiar with it. Uh, we are planning on recording a more extensive series of uh, modules that do focus uh, very closely on the Windows Server Essentials capability so you can really start seeing just uh, what you can do with it from an on-premises perspective as well as how you can really leverage it to integrate with Microsoft's online services. 
Now, coming up in the next module, it's the final one, it's next steps. So what are the additional resources you should be looking at uh, to really help you leverage the content that we've covered today and to really help you start delivering um, modern biz-based solutions out to your customers.